Hi there. Today we're going to talk about range. The range is one of the measures of dispersion and the easiest of them all. It gives you an idea of how the data in a distribution is spread out or dispersed. And it does this by obtaining the difference between the largest and the smallest observation of the distribution. So to calculate range, we use a simple formula R is equal to L minus S, where the largest value in the distribution is represented by L and the smallest value is represented by S. Let us consider the following observations of the ages of children that attended the pediatric outpatient clinic on Monday. The range will be given by the largest value L, which is 10, minus the smallest value S, which is 2 years. So we can say the age range of patients that were attended to on that day was 8 years. Easy peasy. Now what if we have a frequency distribution of the ages of patients that attended the clinic in a month just like this. In the case of a frequency distribution, the frequencies of the various values of the variable or classes do not play any significance when determining the range, since the range depends on only the two extreme observations. So here, the range will be given by the largest value, L, which is 5 years, minus the smallest value, S, which is 1 year. And so our range in this case is 4 years. Similarly, in the case of a group distribution, like say, uh, this data of the ages of medical students in Amadou Bello University, Nigeria, here also the frequency of the various groups or classes do not matter. And the range for the group data is given by the difference between the upper limit of the class having the highest values minus the lower limit of the class having the smallest values. So for this example, the upper limit of the largest class, um, the largest class here is 30 to 35, and the upper limit here is 35, and the lower limit for the smallest class, the smallest class here is 15 to 19, uh, the lower limit here is 15, and so the range will be 35 minus 15, and that will give us 20 years. Now, one thing that is worthy of note about the range is that it's an absolute measure of dispersion. When we say an absolute measure, this means that it is in the unit of the variable that was measured in the data set. So for all our examples, you can see our data of age is in years, right? And the range is also in years. Though this absolute measure of dispersion gives an idea of the amount of dispersion or spread in a set of observations. It cannot be used to compare the variation between two or more series of data sets because it's absolute. So for example, let's look at these two data sets, A and B. The range of the first is 10 minus 1, which is 9. And then the range of the other data set is also 10 minus 1, which is 9. Can we now say the spread or the dispersion of both data sets are the same? No, we cannot. Because when you look at the first one, you can see a kind of even spread from 1 to 10, right? See, we have 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 8, 9, and 10, right? But for the second one, we have 1, then it jumps to 6, and then 8, and then 10. So the one here we're seeing here is even likely to be an outlier. Similarly, if we have one data set with a range of 12 and another one with a range of 20, we cannot say based on this range that one is more dispersed than the other. So a measure of absolute dispersion does not in and of itself tell whether the variation is large or small. Now, if you want to learn more about absolute and relative measures in statistics, please watch this video popping up in the card above. With all that we have said about range, let's close by mentioning the merits and demerits of range. Here are some of the merits of range in statistics. The range is the simplest measure of dispersion. As we have seen, it's very easy to compute and understand. Just subtract the lowest from the highest and boom, you have the range. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Next, the range is rigidly defined as it has only one simple way of doing this calculation, which is the largest value minus the smallest value. There are no two ways about it. It's always just find the largest value and subtract the smallest value from it. You have your range. Now, the range has quite a number of demerits. 
The first is, the range is not a reliable measure of dispersion because it's based on only two observations. And not just any two observations, the two extreme observations, which themselves are subject to change. So we can say the range is affected by extreme values. Also, it does not tell us anything about the values in between the smallest and the largest observations. So clearly, it's not reliable as a measure of spread. Next, the range is very much affected by fluctuations in sampling. Its value varies widely from sample to sample. And this is bad for any kind of statistic because statistics depends on the sample. So if you take different samples from the population and measure range, you will find very wide differences in the range. One other demerit of range is that the range cannot be used if we are dealing with group data that has open-ended classes. So if we have group data like this, for example, then it is impossible to find the range because here we don't know what the smallest value is and here we don't know what the largest value is. This is also why it is not good to use open-ended classes when grouping numerical data. And lastly, the range is not suitable for further mathematical treatment. So except for coefficient of range, you can't see the range in any way being used for any mathematical or statistical formula. So it's not suitable for further mathematical treatment. So this is what you need to know about the range. And in summary, the range is the simplest measure of dispersion in statistics. It's an easy way to have an idea of the spread of the data values in a data set. It is calculated by subtracting the smallest value from the largest value in a data set. It can be obtained from raw data as well as from frequency distributions. And it has a couple of merits and demerits. Now, if you gained value with this video, Give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends and colleagues. And if you like this content and you want to get more of this, please consider subscribing to this channel and click on the notification bell icon so you won't miss any of my future videos. In my next video, God willing, I am going to show you how to compute and interpret the coefficient of range for individual, discrete, as well as continuous series data. See you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching.